is uh, Chris Barowski. He is a graduate student in uh, Slavic languages and literatures, teaches uh, Polish. Uh, his research interests include sociolinguistics, how uh, non-linguistic factors can influence the languages and their current status. Uh, and he takes as his topics uh, today Silesia and uh, Poland. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you all for coming on this lovely, nice, warm winter day. Um, so today I'll be talking about um, Silesian and Silesian and um, I'll be concentrating on Silesia only within the uh, Polish border. So I will not be talking about the part of Silesia um, within the Czech Republic. Um, and so the reason for my talk is the uh, recent now from the government's Joint Commission for National and Ethnic Minorities to change the bill on ethnic and national minorities in the original language. Um, so according to the uh, proposition, um, a Silesian minority was supposed to be added to the list of four already existing ethnic minorities in Poland, which currently are the uh, Karaims, the Lemkos, the Romanis, and the Tatars. Um, so in my talk, first of all, I will um, guide you through the uh, definition of an ethnic minority um, in regards with the Polish law. Then I will talk about the uh, linguistic, political, and sociological perspective on the issue. And finally, I will um, talk about how the present day situation can influence the future of the Silesian and Poland as a country. Um, so according to the bill, which is in force since 2005, there are six criteria for being an ethnic minority. So first of all, such a group has to be numerically smaller than the rest of the population. It has to be significantly different from others. Um, such a group has to strive to preserve own language, customs, culture. Also be aware of a sense of a community and so be able to express it and protected. Um, furthermore, such a group has to live on the territory of Poland for at least 100 years and cannot associate oneself with, with, it, with any nation which is organized within any nation state. Okay. Um, so the commission's snow came in spite of almost 807 74,000 Polish citizens declaring to be of Silesian nationality or ethnicity, and many of them declared to be of Polish nationality as well. Um, so the latest census is unique in the history of modern Poland in that for the first time in history, it allowed people to choose more than one national or ethnic identification. Um, and so if you take a look at the uh, text of the uh, decision, which is marked as handout number two, of course in Polish, uh, you will see uh, the reasons for such a decision. And so the commission stated that such a proposition did not correspond with the uh, reality, and therefore the members of the commission um, thought that Silesians are a community of a uh, regional, not an ethnic character. Therefore, um, cannot be included in this bill. Um, and so just to give you an idea of um, what it makes to be an ethnic minority um, in the light of the Polish law, it's not only that it's officially recognized as such, but there's also some very tangible um, benefits from that. Um, so first of all, it gives you access to education in a minority language. Um, the language can be used in official situations. Also, there is uh, financial support to promote the language, culture, customs, and so on. Um, so as you can see, it's not only a note on a paper, it's also about money. Um, and these are the uh, results of the latest census. So it's number four on the handouts. So as you can see, the uh, Polish, um, there were more than 37 million people declaring Polish nationality. However, if you take a look at the uh, um, nationalities or identities other than Polish, right? so we have Silesian, Śląska as the number one, and the number of people um, declaring to be of Silesian nationality or ethnicity um, is almost 
847,000 people. So it's, we can think of it more or less in terms of the uh, uh, official population of Austin, Texas. Um, and of those, 430,000 people declared to be of Polish nationality as well. Um, so if we go through the bill and try to see if the uh, current situation of the Sanisians actually correspond, corresponds to the uh, um, reality and if the uh, requirements from the bill still are met, um, you will notice that the uh, four pick up requirements can be met very easily. However, there are two question marks when it comes to those two criteria. So first of all, um, the bill requires for an ethnic or a national minority so that they, um, its representative, representatives have been living on the current territory of Poland, which is important, so it's going to be the current territory, uh, for at least 100 years. Um, so if you even just grasp, grasp the uh, history of Poland, you know well that there's been um, thousands of ethnic Poles who used to live east of the Book River and then were resettled to the west. Um, so we already got a question mark because many of them settled in Silesia, the, the upper Silesia, lower Silesia, and so-called regained lands. Right? And the second um, requirement, so such a group has to be significantly different from other citizens. Um, so I like this. Um, actually the best because um, we can only surmise and wonder about what the lawmakers meant by significantly different and how do we actually assess this difference. Um, so here, this one apart from being the weakest of the points of this bill is also very prone to be used by politicians of any kind so if there's uh, any government they can always say say, well, you're not really that different from the Poles, like, you look the same, you almost talk the same, so there's no, so there's really no reason to, um, for you to be recognized as a separate ethnic group. And, of course, as, as it's usually in the history of Central Europe, history is a big factor here. Um, so Silesia used to be a part of Bohemia, Austria, Russia, then the German Empire, and so finally in 1945, um, the part of Silesia that I'm talking about today was incorporated into the Polish state. Um, so from the political perspective, um, the commission pointed to negative social consequences of such a project. Um, so the members um, thought that if one of a communities, which is only a community of the original character, is to be recognized officially, then it may consequently lead to other communities demanding the very same rights. Um, and another reason that the uh, Commission gave is that um, such communities, namely the communities of the uh, original character, cannot be protected under law to the very same extent that the ethnic and national minorities are. Um, so if you take a closer look at the uh, text, Polish text of the uh, decision, you, will, you can notice some kind of ambiguity here, because from, from one hand, we have a no from a, uh, what is actual vertical movement, right, of a community, but on the other hand, we have a strong yes for supporting the regions, um, local customs, traditions, dialects, and so on. And when it comes to the uh, commission itself, as for August last year, it consisted of 35 members and all of the uh, representatives of national minorities and ethnic minorities in Poland were involved in the uh, commission. So they are uh, at the same time members of the commission as well as um, several representatives of the uh, Polish government. So, in the Polish context, it is the minorities that get to decide about the fate of other minorities, if we, of course, consider Salishians to be such. Um, so, politically, there is really no... Sorry. Okay. 
Um, so politically, there is really no interest among the parties elected um, to the parliament in um, settling this issue. And so there are, of course, um, individual MPs who do support this cause, and they are trying to um, change the current state of affairs. But there is not a single party um, present in the parliament that would stand up and say, OK, let's do something about it. Let's grant this um, broader rights to the Silesians. Um, and so just as Polish parties are usually very, very much polarized about all kinds of issues, um, in the case of the Silesians, there, are, they, there is a, a very broad agreement. And it doesn't really depend on the side of the political scene that you're on. Um, so for example, um, there was quite a steer there um, several years ago when the leader of Law and Justice said that the Silesians are actually quote-unquote a camouflage German option. Um, whereas just several weeks ago, one of the uh, representatives of the Democratic Alliance called those movements um, as movements that are supposed to quote, their Silesia apart from Poland, not quote. So as you can see, although they are from exactly the opposite sides, their rhetoric when it comes to Sanisha is almost the same. And so this is important um, not only for per se, but also because the views that the politicians hold very often get transmitted into the views of average citizens. And so um, one of the uh, biggest fears is that um, granting broader rights to Silesia or the Silesian movements or the uh, region per se might cause um, some negative consequences for Poland, including secession. And if you just take a look at Polish history, um, you would see that um, cases like that very easily get um, compared to what was happening in Poland's past. So the first um, thing that comes to our mind is the partition of Poland, right? So again, some some part of Poland like doesn't want to be included in Poland, or like they feel like they're not Poles. Like what is happening? Um, so of course, um, those fears and those opinions get very easily exploited by the uh, politicians. And this is just an example of um, such a rhetoric. So this is a billboard from the latest local elections, so, and we have a candidate of the Democratic Left Alliance saying from the poster, Poland welcomes the Silesians, right? So just as the Silesians try to separate themselves from the Poles and distinguish themselves as much as they can, um, here we have an opposite kind of rhetoric, so it's all about this inclusion. And this is a... Uh, interesting uh, piece of document. You might think of it as a uh, kind of a uh, census which was done, let's say, 70 years ago, 80 years ago. So still, when the biggest part of Silesia was um, within the German borders. So I would like to point your attention here to points 8 and 7. So in 8, we have um, which language you speak at home. The answer is Silesian, right? German. And in seven, we have nationality. The answer that the uh, person gave is Silesian, then it was crossed out, and probably an official just wrote German. <laughs> right. um, so from the linguistic perspective, Silesian is still prevalently seen as just one of the dialects of Polish. And so even if you ask, um, any of the Polish language specialists, they would probably say, well, Silesian is just a dialect of Polish, just like Kashubian is, just like we have some other regional varieties. Um, and so when it comes to the uh, separateness of a language, um, those are the arguments that get um, repeated most of the time. So one of them is that, well, there's really no serious literature in Silesian, so how can we actually say that it's a separate language? Or how do we know that it's possible to write literature in Silesian? Um, another one is that 
it's not a language that you could use in official situations. So let's say you have a, some kind of a um, meeting with an official, so it would be probably impossible for you to deal with the whole case inside and therefore it's not really a separate language. Um, also, there is no established linguistic norm. There is still no Salesian standard, and there are still um, several local rights. Um, so apart from those external factors, there are also some internal factors that we have to take into consideration. Um, so even within the group of the uh, pro Salesian, let's put it, activists, there is really no agreement about the direction that Salesian as a language or dialect, whatever we call it, should go further. Um, so some of them would just say that um, it should be, it should stay the way it is now, whereas others would point to the necessity of standardizing the language. And so um, standardization is a process which um, on one hand um, builds a standard language, an official language, which can be used in probably all the capacities that you can think of. But on the other hand, um, during the process of standardization, we always get to the point of the so-called selection. So which means that we have to, um, or somebody has to decide which elements of the language should be kept and which should be not um, accepted into the language. And so some of the pro um activists fear that this may put the local varieties in danger because physically it's not possible to include all of the uh, varieties into a standard language and the fact that their Silesian is quite differentiated within itself makes it even harder. However, um, as you can see, Silesian has much better press abroad so um, it is featured in the Ethnologue catalog as a separate language it has its own ISO code, SZL, which is quite an important thing. And also there is a Silesian version of Wikipedia. So if you just go online, you will notice that there is more than 3,100 articles written in Silesia, on Silesian Wikipedia already. And so just to give you an example um, of the language, mm, so the story here is that the guy that you can see on the picture when he was 16, he went on vacation to another region of Poland. And so what he did is he just set up a fire somewhere in the woods, and after some time, a fireman came and told him to put out the fire. And so what he did is he responded the actual, exactly the same way that he would respond when back at home. So in Silesian, right? And so what he said was, Panie Feuermann, co was szteruje taką małą blanderę? My są tu mamy obsztarowane borksteniami, tu się nie powinno nic hajcnąć. So if you know Polish, um, you can actually um, assess how much of this text you understood. Um, to which the fireman um, was supposed to respond, do you speak English? <laughs> so this was just a uh, stand-up story about that the, the guy was telling and he was wondering how is it actually possible that we, within the borders of the same country, cannot understand each other? What is happening? Um, and finally, we get to the sociological perspective. So one of the factors that you, you need to know is the, that the uh, Silesians are very eager to distinguish themselves from the Poles. And it's, you can see it in all, practically all kinds of spheres of life. And also another thing is that they have a really strong sense of regional identification, something that is not really that common in Poland. Um, so whenever asked, they would probably respond, whenever asked like, who you are, where are you from, they would probably respond, I'm from Silesia, I'm Silesian. Um, so the Kashubians, um, who are um, a uh, minority living in the north of Poland, um, they have assumed usually a double identity. So this means that whenever asked, they would say, well, I'm a Kashubian and I'm a Pole, and there's a, a quite an equivalence between those two terms. 
However, it is not the case for the Silesians. Um, and that is because Silesian identity is the most basic um, identity for them. Of course, um, many of them would also identify themselves with the Polish nation, some of them with the German nation. And um, so, and as you, as you have seen on the slide with the history of um, Silesia, it is totally understandable. However, um, Silesia will always be the uh, most prevalent identity in this case. Um, and so, to give you an idea of how the discourse Silesians versus Poles look like, um, I went online and found this um, discussion which was very interesting. So, what do we have here is a username, nickname, um, Arthur, asking, is a Silesian a Pole? Um, and, um, judging from the number of responses, which you can see, just in here, so um, there were 4,602 responses at the time when I was making those screenshots, so quite popular. So the first response was, um, quote, well, what do you think, you idiot? And it came <laughs> 63 minutes after, so as you might have noticed, um, I did not include it in here. Um, however, there is a response from Andre who writes, Dear colleague, Silesian does not consider oneself to be neither Pole nor German. Silesian has a positive attitude toward a Pole, but not as positive attitude toward a German. And so if you, um, if we take into consideration this slide with the uh, German censor, you might start to wonder um, why they don't have such an attitude towards German. Um, Anya, on the other hand, writes, I'm a Silesian, I'm not Pole, I'm not a Pole, but I am a citizen of Poland. Mm -hmm. right? So we have an, an exclusiveness in here. Um, here on the top we have an interesting back and forth. So Jagoda wrote, I was born in Silesia and, I'm, and I consider myself to be a Pole living in Silesia, to which also responds, well, that's good, you got to be yourself, but why don't you come back to Poland? <laughs> right, so, it's getting interesting in here. Um, and here, um, a username nicknamed Schnosk is responding to Andrzej's um, entry that I just quoted and asking if um, those Polish citizens who are living in other regions of Poland are also supposed to be only taken as Polish citizens and not Poles, but just representatives of different regions as some Silesians are trying to do. And this is a uh, cover of a book that I wanted to show you. Um, it was published in 1959, and its title says, We Speak Proper Polish, with a subtitle, language exercises for Silesian schools. So it's not that um, all of the kids were using this textbook. Um, it was only um, used in Silesia. And if you actually talk to anyone who went to a public school, let's say in the 50s or in the 60s in Silesia, of course, you would very often hear stories about how they were persecuted or even um, physically beaten, beaten or stories like that just because they were using Silesian words or vocabulary or they were not speaking proper Polish. So that's a uh, something from the uh, communist era. And to end with, um, I wanted to show you four opinions of people who are directly or indirectly involved in the whole Silesian Polish discourse. Um, so Rafał Bartek is a uh, representative of the uh, German minority in Poland and also member of the uh, previously mentioned commission. Um, so according to him, um, introducing the notion of Silesian ethnic identity is dangerous for the Silesian itself, which was, which always used to be an open formula. Um, so what he believes the proposed bill um, would do is only close borders 
and introduce an artificial division, which consequently would antagonize people. Um, another opinion from Henry Garoshevich, who is a uh, linguist working at the University of Wrocław. Mm, so when it comes to the uh, Silesian as a language, in his opinion, it would be best to accept the notion of a variant language, so a standard language that has local varieties, and then um, let those varieties bloom and develop themselves to see which one of them will be prevalent and which will be used, for example, um, in literature. Um, when it comes to the Silesians, um, in his opinion, they are not a nation in the uh, modern sense of the word, or they cannot be named a nation just like the Poles, the Germans, or the Czechs can. However, um, for him, it is not impossible that the Silesians will finally get to the point when they can uh, be named a nation. So uh, we cannot exclude such a possibility. Um, and so what he says is that the Silesians the Silesian movement cannot be interfered with or um, they cannot be ignored since this would only cause much more trouble to Poland than probably needed. Um, Andrzej Markowski is a Polish language specialist and he's a member of the uh, Polish Language Council. So um, from an interview um, made four years ago we learned that um, we cannot really think of Silesian as a language which is different from Polish. Um, and another thing is that the council um, does not feel that Silesian should be recognized as a uh, regional language in Poland. So currently there is only one <coughs> regional language in Poland, which is Kashubian. And finally an opinion from Yolanta Tambor, who is a uh, linguist working at the University of Silesia. So what I would like to point your attention to here is her sense of identity. So she says that she considers herself to be Polish, a person of Polish nationality. However, within this, within this framework of Polishness, she also feels, um, considers herself to be Silesian and points to the example of Kashubians. Um, so when it comes to the future of Silesian and the Silesian movement, um, as you have seen, there are both internal and external problems that the movement has to overcome. Um, however, it is, um, it is a rule that when countries starts to ignore local or let's say regional cultures, uh, varieties, languages, regional movements emerge, especially um, if it's a highly centralized state. And this is exactly what we've been witnessing right now in Poland. Um, so of course the Silesian movement is the strongest one, also in terms of Facebook likes, if you want to measure it that way. Um, but you can easily find other movements that tend to um, follow the same example. So we have um, the autonomy movement of the Pomerania, of Mazovia, Greater Poland, and so on. So it somehow starts to develop. And of course, the, uh, the fact that Poland is one of the most homogenous linguistically country in Europe makes it really hard for any non-standard or substandard varieties to um, be developed or promoted um, or even used in daily speech. So for example, if you speak any local variety of Polish and you find yourself in any kind of a official situation, if you start speaking dialect or whatever we call it, um, you would very quickly um, be perceived as someone who's probably non-educated or probably doesn't know how things work or probably just came from a remote village somewhere in the mountains where there's no internet, electricity, and so on. <laughs> um, so this makes it really, really hard for any anything that is not standard Polish to be not even promoted, but even used on a daily basis. 
And as I already mentioned, um, there is no interest uh, among the political class to change the current linguistic or ethnic uh, landscape of the country. Um, so my take on the issue is this. Um, in my opinion, Poland has much more to lose than to gain if the uh, present policy towards Silesia is to be continued. Or um, it doesn't really have to be Silesia only, because um, if such or similar movements emerge, let's say, in other parts of Poland, um, that would be of the same result. Um, another point that we have to make is that regionalism as such is yet, yet to reach Poland. So just as in the so-called Western Europe, uh, people have no problem with associating themselves with the region, let's say, Bavaria or all the regions in France, um, this is not the case in Poland yet. And um, as we have seen from the quotes or from the billboard, the political class is not really ready to accept those notions of regional identities. And so this, of course, of course gets transmitted to the uh, citizens. Uh, so in my opinion, until the current situation is solved, the Silesians and their cause will continue to be politically exploited and politically exploited by both sides. So this is a uh, really um, good thing to grab on, so it's really up to the politicians um, what to do with it. And <laughs> just to end with, let's see how well you managed to uh, grasp Silesia. Um, so I found this online on one of the websites. So apparently um, the thing here was that the uh, re readers were supposed to submit um, Silesian, their version of the uh, um, popular film titles. Um, so for Mamma Mia, we have Wopierona, uh, Mission Impossible, so if we were to translate it into English, that would be, oh, brother-in-law, that's a hard task, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, so it actually looks like something that you say. Fobadis, Kai Lejesh, Man in Black, that's a nice one. Hopev Czornik Anzuga, right, so Anzug, that's a nice German loan word. Um, gone with the wind. Pete was Luftem. <laughs> uh, but Batman is my favorite one. Um, so any idea about Batman? Silesian. Hop Luftmischa. <laughs> so Luft uh, is the German word for air, right? Mischa, so like mouse. So we have a guy, air, and a mouse, right? And that makes a Batman. Okay. Right? Um, and that's the end of my talk, so thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be happy to answer.